right, we are live from the 178th floor of the famous World Play Inc. Studios here with the one, the only, Hillary Scar. Hey, 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 everyone. It's Tuesday, the best day of the week. We are hanging with Hillary and my dragon, Dee Dee, being chased by the magical David Maldo. But let's give him a proper welcome. Uh, please welcome my co-host, the fabulous David Maldo. <laughs> you got to get, you gotta get the second, second one. one in. You got to get the it's second one in. Critical. Oh, where's our... Critical. Yep. Oh my gosh, everyone. Thank you. It's Tuesday. Happy We're here. Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. For uh, people who are watching for the first time, thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm Hillary Scarl, and we started this fabulous uh, live stream experiment. What, in January? We're on show episode 21, I believe. January of 1982 on episode 21,000. <laughs> I think so. It feels like that sometimes. And yet David and I were talking right before the show that we are adding new things every single episode as we're still, um, you know, pretty new, but uh, we added some fun bells and whistles tonight. So you guys are really in for a treat. When something feels uh, this right, it's hard to believe it's new. It, it feels like we just been an institution. This is, this is the, the Johnny Carson of our millennia. It's true. And like they say, you know, if doing this show is wrong, I don't want to be right. I know that was a bad takeoff, but uh, anyway, they're okay. That's what I was waiting for. There you go. So we started the show to sort of, I, first of all, I really miss my friends and to be able to hang with my friends. And I have, there's so many creative people that now through David's fabulous technology here, we can connect to anyone around the world and talk about the journey of being an artist, a creative process, the fact that, you know, these careers are not linear, that people have side jobs, people have side hustles, they have ups, they have downs, and we celebrate the wins, which is really fun, but we also talk about, we get real here, and that's what I really appreciate is people just saying that it's, even though we have some sparkly exteriors that, you know, there's rough patches and bumps. That's my dog, Charlie, playing with her squeaky toy. So, yeah, we're still going to do a Charlie show. We need a Charlie show. And eventually. Um, and David, those legs are looking good on you. Yeah, I've been, you know, keeping keeping fit. Keeping fit. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, I, I dressed down today. I'm trying to be a little more casual. I usually wear a collared shirt, but that's so not me. I was doing it for this. I might go back to it, but I don't know. It, it, it you know, went with the suit better, like the lower half of the, the body, but uh, I didn't have the logo. This, what does this one say? I you usually prefer like, there will be an answer. Let it be. There will be an answer. I, I prefer I prefer a t-shirt. I'm a t-shirt guy, I think. You are. And I think it suits you. This and is I ridiculous think to waste time on me when we have an amazing guest. This is insane. We do have an amazing it's insane guest. to be talking about me right now. Insane. Well, I do love talking about you because you are insanely fabulous, but you get two Hillary's for the price of one today uh, because we have our incredible, the fabulous, the effervescent Hillary Bereford. Please give her a warm welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, Hillary. Good to see hi, you. Watching, listening. She's here. I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to see if I can get my dog to stop squeaking for just a moment. Um, she's participating. She's very excited that you're here as well. <laughs> I mean, I'm thrilled as well. <laughs> I have a dog fan, you know, it's good. It's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, dogs are welcome. I mean, people know now people own cats, dogs, kids, uh, hamsters, whatever that appear on Zoom and on live streams. So I think it's part of the magic that we've That's discovered. <laughs> It's part of the charm. So part of being you're a real back. Person. What's that, David? It's part of being a real person. That you, yeah, yeah that you have, have a full pets. life. I got a little kitty. He's my buddy. He's gonna show up on stream at some point. I know. I like your cat. He does make an appearance. So Hillary, you just got back traveling back from Boston, right? You just got here two days ago. Back two days. Ago. Yes. Um, a little bit of an unplanned trip to Boston. I went home to help my dad after uh, open heart surgery. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh, Is he okay? 
real life coming in hot at the top of this interview. Um, yeah, no, he's doing great. Good. Uh, good. For three weeks, just helping him with recovery, and it was awesome. I was so just really grateful that I got to be there and got to help him. So that's a luxury, and thank God for you know silver linings of of COVID. Like at least now we can actually be remote and do these Zoom things, and it's a little bit more accepted. So it allowed me to go home and be with family when they actually needed me for a change. <laughs> I'm sure he was so happy to have you there. To yeah. Be home, my God. Yeah, I think I think you know physically he's doing great uh, post surgery, but I think psychologically I, I I think it was great and it was great for me to be able to be there for him too. So it was a good trip. Well, I'm yeah. glad you're back here in Los Angeles. Uh, we can David, travel again. Yes, and David's in Florida. For people who don't know that our guests come from all over, but again through David's magic we can. Um, make everything come together here. So uh, for those people who don't know, I'm gonna read Hillary's bio just to get a little bit of background of how fabulous she is. So as she just mentioned, she is from Boston. Uh, right. She says Boston born and bred. I like that a lot. Yeah. Until a life-changing experience with director Brad Silberling on Moonlight Mile led her to Los Angeles her origin story. All right, she's since appeared on Showtime's Emmy nominated and Golden Globe winning United States of Terra with Toni Collette. And she was on both sides of the camera. Yes, Charlie. Both love my I'm about it. <laughs> this is a squeaky toy. And now, oh. yeah, yeah, it's it's cute, but we're in the middle of reading Hillary's bio. I like Thanks, she's Charlie. Cute. That's, how, that's how dogs clap, you know? It's true, it's her participation going, yes, me too, good credits. All right, for she was on both sides of the camera for Oscar nominee John Sayles' Go for Sisters with Edward James Almos and Mahershala Ali, which received an Independent Spirit Award nomination after premiering at the very fancy South by Southwest. Hillary executive produced and co-starred with Deanna Russo and Lisa Ann Walter in the ice cream truck, hailed by Variety as an eccentric horror opus which I want to hear about more. So uh, recently, Hillary appeared in Lion Gate's, Lion's Gate sci-fi Lifelike, the social justice drama Equal Standard with Ice-T, and she's going to be in the new AMC series, Kevin Can Fuck Himself, launching on my birthday, June 20th. So congratulations. Nice. You went for the full fuck. I appreciate that as a boss. I did. I that tremendously. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, we were talking about that. David is a little, um, he's he's got a much cleaner mouth than mine, but it's like. I'm a lady. I'm demure. Yeah. And also, demure. Hillary, I'll also add that uh, Equal Standard that you mentioned is out uh, yesterday on all video demand platforms. It just got released. It was in the theaters a few weeks ago. Now it is out everywhere as of yesterday. So congratulations. Yeah. So everyone watching can watch that tonight if they want after this you know, ready for that you know, you know i have known hillary for years because all hillary's it's a rule that we all have to know each other and they um I'm somehow i tell you it's a rule it is a rule uh and so we have a lot of friends in common we'd hang out but man hillary's like always doing something i mean that's the one thing that on social media she's like i'm in this film and my short just won another award and hey look at me here and it's and actors out there i think that's like such an incredible example of hustling that you have climbed yourself into i mean you're you're gorgeous and talented but your hustle is really admirable I have that's to say. that east well david knows that's that east coast hustle <laughs> That East Coast. We know. I grew, I grew up in Jersey, so yeah. There you go. We only have one speed on the East Coast, and it's like all in. <laughs> That's it. All in. Yeah. Well, you're all in. Well, I want to share uh, your work with folks before we get dive deep into some more uh, conversation about it. So we're going to hop to the screening room and show Hillary Bereford's two-minute acting reel. Yes. And then we will come back and have a little chit-chat about more of her work. So David, let's go to the screening room and let's roll tape on Hillary Bereford. You came to the wrong house, pig. Try 
trying to get me to do things with him. You know that, right? Sure. He put his hand in my bathing suit. I know. I liked it. You miss your husband? Yeah. Well, if you ever had the desire to cheat, now would be the time to do it. I have a really good vibrator. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to go find my kids. The eternal lesson that I sincerely hope is shining its wisdom upon you is that there are those who have to live and relive the horror of our impaired judgments like a never-ending game of pool. I could just drink coffee all day. Why did I just say that? I have no idea, but I once tried to light a fart and set my bush on fire. What the fuck are you talking about? Ben, I don't know what's going on, but Tom once went down to me after I had a miscarriage. Oh! Do any of you people have anything to offer up? Yes, what is it, Cheryl? I was thinking, could we just push back November, rename it into the Christmas line, and rebrand it as an event so we don't have to admit we missed the All right, listen, if I'm being totally candid, about a month ago, we're gonna let you go. But sometime in the last month, I don't know, something changed. Don't fuck it up. Mom, there's something in the closet. <laughs> she said, there's nothing in the closet. Keep it shut. I love you so much, can't count all the ways I died for you, girl, and all they can say is he's not your kind. You never get tired of putting it down, and I never know when I come around what I'm gonna find. Don't let them break up your mind. so so good bravo i'm doing a chair curtsy <laughs> <laughs> i'm curious how many times have you died on screen with all the horror films you've done um what's weird is i don't often die on screen i'm usually already dead <laughs> so you come back lots of zombie yeah, roles i'm always like, a, like yeah like like reanimated somehow I, I play a lot of dead girls i think it's like the um the big blue eyes I, I i just constantly get cast it's like a ghost who comes back to like fuck something up <laughs> you're, you're good at being scary i'm a, I'm a little scared of you right now <laughs> yeah, yeah. after watching it it's like i better not make her mad <laughs> yeah, it's creepy my quentin tarantino reel that's like that's like the dark my my friend uh patricia chica who's a director said she goes you're like the girl next door who's like hiding in the basement you're like yes <laughs> yeah like, How's this real like like friendly but a little bit something off there so yeah i, I, I like i you know i do all stuff but i love the dark stuff so i just that tend to go like, like moment off when you like the door was closing behind you and that face pops in at the last minute yes. what is that from that is terrifying yes that's from uh, a short film called latch it's um a uh, crypt tv short so you can see it on crypt tv's youtube page and uh, at one point they were trying to turn it into a feature i don't know um what happened with that the director is landon stommer who does amazing things with crypt tv and like a lot of like monster stuff um uh, what's it called the look -see, i believe which is a really famous crypt tv short so he's a master of horror and i love that short <laughs> um, oh. and actually now that the, the, the guy who plays my son in that short he and i now share a manager so <laughs> we can't get away from each other we have to just now work together forever that's what happens when you find really good people you hang on to them it's so true yeah, yeah. It's good. I'm so glad we finally had a chance to work together on the singletons. And of course, that was all the virtual production. So we've had almost the entire cast and Jeff Gates been the cinematographer, which is good. But we did that during COVID. So nobody was in the same room together. Everything was done through uh, Zoom and then this other recording platform, which was good. But Hillary, I like had so much uh respect for you that her character at the end like this is a the, the short takes place like at the beginning of the pandemic 
where they all realize they're locked with their parents. And so she was having a little bit of a meltdown. <laughs> and so her makeup tutorial turned quite clownish. And I sent her a reference. There's a great Amy Schumer video where Amy like overdoes her makeup. And so I was just like, Amy or uh, Hillary, if uh, you want to, I'm sort of using that as a reference. And she did it because she had to do her own makeup like because there's nobody there we it was all virtual so she actually had the balls the guts to totally yeah uh, I should have had a screenshot but I still can't believe we actually did that like I can't believe we made a short film like <laughs> remotely entirely remotely in the middle of the pandemic like that to me is shocking still <laughs> and it played it at a good. pandemic festival it played at Burbank International I think that's amazing. I love During it. During the pandemic. And I think that it's getting picked up for distribution. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, amazing. that somebody's compiling a bunch of shorts that were made during the pandemic. So we'll see if it actually happens, happens. And, you know, for the 10 cents we make off of it, uh, uh, producers donating any proceeds to charities. Since I think we've decided after the pandemic, no one really wants to see more films about the pandemic. Cause it's like, okay, we are done. It's done. I mean, it's not done, but. I don't know. Everyone's talking about Bo Burnham. So I don't think people are done with pandemic oh, material. I haven't seen it yet, but you know, just saying, I guess there is an appetite. It's really good. David, so. do you know about this? The, uh, Bo Burnham inside. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, Netflix. but it's all, everyone on the internet's like, you have to see it, you have to see it. I had to pause it. I've, I have 20 minutes left and I'm so jealous that I didn't think of this. <laughs> like, it's one of those you're watching, you're like, this is brilliant. It's brilliant, yeah. And That's I'm, what everyone's and I'm saying. inspired and jealous that these are thoughts that a lot of us have. And of course, I don't play piano, but I immediately sent the link to Bill Larkin, who was our second guest, who does that. He makes up comedy songs. So I sent him a link. He goes, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw it. So, yeah, there's pandemic content. You know, when it's done well, it's done. It's great. <laughs> sort of like improv. When it's done great, it's great. When it's done wrong, oof, God. The fact that he was developing that, like, for months and months, alone in a tiny room, shooting it editing it, writing all the content. And I love how he's, he actually showed ordering lights and then having these, all these crazy light effects he was doing practical. Oh. Most of them were practical that he was doing in the room. It's crazy. Anyway. It's on my list. <laughs> on the list. Yeah, totally. So, uh, I'm going to take us to our magical place early just because I'm so excited because it's one of my favorite places on earth uh, every week and hanging with Hillary. We try to uh, allow some more happiness into people's lives. So our guests get to choose their happy place, their magical place. So Hillary, would you like to tell everyone where, uh, oops, you're over here, where <laughs> your happy place, where we are going this week to continue this conversation? Yes, we are all going to beautiful Scotland. Yay. Ah, click the price is right and you win the full package. I like the price is right voice, sort of. <laughs> you um, did. So yeah. pretty. Oh, look how gorgeous it is. It's gorgeous. amazing. Um, so this is this is my happy place. Oh, I love the, the northeast of Scotland specifically. I just love the people and the land and just beautiful place. Now, when was the last time you were in Scotland? Oh, I was so lucky. I went right before the pandemic. I went uh, I went for Hogmanay, which is New Year uh, for 2020. What? Hogmanay 2020. Um, my my friend Delane uh, Morrison Wallace lives um, up in, uh, where she lives, from Oak, I do believe, up in the Northeast of Scotland. And she, she said, um, oh, we're having a a party, but it's just a bunch of farmers. Like it's like a, like a low key house party with a bunch of farmers in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, um, yes, I'm flying there and I'm doing that. So that's that's uh, where I spent the last New Year before everything changed. So this with a bunch of farmers, people, with a bunch of farmers, yes, yeah. so with a bunch of farmers, like up in up in the, the middle of you know northeast Scotland, and it was just such a beautiful thing. 
<laughs> I've been going to Scotland. It's like, like my fourth or was it fifth time going to Scotland since 2013. Yep, yeah, I've been going a lot. So yeah, that is my happy place. It's so pretty I there. Agree. It's, it's uh, gorgeous. I, I was actually there for the ooh. Edinburgh Festival. Oh, I love this. This is the Isle of Skye where for you Monty Python fans where they filmed the killer rabbit scene. Mm. And I actually took, it was like the one touristy thing I did. There was like, it was the Ted Badger Isle of Sky tour. And so you pile in and you pay your money and Ted drives us like a little Brady Bunch bus and we sing show tunes as we go. And then he points different things out and you're not sure being of Scottish uh, sense of humor, how much he's making up, how much was actually real. And he knew of course the different places to get out and take pictures, but uh, yeah, that was my Isle of Sky trip, which I loved. Well, I also recommend the Isle of Iona to anybody who's traveling to Scotland. It's a little lesser known uh, than Skye, which is what makes it so special. You have to travel across one island, uh, the Isle of Mull, I believe, to get to the Isle of Iona. And it's like maybe three, four miles wide, like the whole island. Mm. Um, and my friend um, who grew up in Elgin had told me about it and said it was his happy place and his favorite place. So I was like, I have to go see this. So I spent a weekend there by myself and it was the weekend that it was their golf tournament. And what they do is they literally clear the sheep off of the meadow, like right next to the water. And then the whole town and people flying in from all over the place and they come and play like in the sort of old fashioned sense of golf, like the true community version of golf. Mm -hmm. And they have like, you know, cases of beer as prizes and like all that kind of stuff. So I got to see this like super special once a year, the, uh, the uh, Iona open, <laughs> but they were like, literally like, get these sheep off of here. We got to move the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> gonna make, make room i'm like what i'm like this is incredible awesome <laughs> best weekends i've ever had yeah now i like how they always mark the sheep like i remember driving and that's like the best part is going through the countryside but then you see a bunch of sheep with red butts and blue butts and it's like what is with spray painting your sheep and they're like well that's so the farmers know which sheep are theirs i guess if they commingle during the day and uh i did not know that that that's we put dog collars on our dogs they paint blue balls on their sheep so <laughs> it's <was> very <laughs> boy oh but it was good hey david take us to the castle i or love the castle? that the castle oh you mean where i belong where you belong your place is <laughs> in the castle this did you have a drawbridge you. though to protect from the ogres and the Oh, for sure I would. I did, um, the, when I was in Scotland the last time, I did tour a bunch of castles, including Dun Otter Castle, which is on the coast and is what one of the Game of Thrones castles, I believe, is based on. And then there's another little castle that's this like little pink confection of a cupcake that's a castle. And it's just amazing. It's tall and skinny and bright pink, naturally. Like the stone. What? Yeah, pretty amazing. So that's so cool. What were you going to say, David? It reminds you of. Oh, you mentioned Monty Python before. You mentioned as particularly uh, the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail movie. Uh, that's what the, uh, the the rabbit scene is from the Holy Grail movie. And this reminds me so much of that movie. Um, and I think it was because well, a lot of it was filmed in Scotland. Yeah, they had the coconuts. You don't even have horses. You're just banking two coconuts together. No, we're not. <laughs> I, like, I like the torso. <laughs> The That's torso for Monty Python, yeah. When they're, they're, they're just like oh. the sword fighting and they chop off all the limbs, and, he's, and the guy oh, still right, wants to right, fight. Right. It was just yeah. a flesh wound, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll call it a draw. <laughs> oh, good old Monty Python, my god, still holds oh, up. The, the best sketch by far is the cheese sketch. There's in my mind, there's no competition for the cheese, the sketch. cheese sketch. Have you ever seen the Monty Python cheese sketch? In the cheese shop. Please remind me. Continue. <laughs> Basically, they walk into the cheese shop and start ordering cheese, but they don't have any of the cheeses that oh, they yes. ordered. 
and they run through literally every kind of cheese known to man. And they're like, oh, sorry, sir, our bed broke down this morning. You know, they have an excuse for why they don't have like each cheese. Any it's cheese good. in the cheese shop. And they start, you know, they ask for like Venezuelan beaver cheese. It's like, any Venezuelan beaver cheese? It's like, not as such, sir. <laughs> we need to do a Monty Python night. Yeah, I haven't a- seen Monty Python in so long, but it's interesting how those sketches just stay with you. Yeah. Like for me, it's just the dead point. The dead parrot. Yeah, the dead parrot sketch. Just brilliant. The absurdity. They nailed the yeah, the feet. It's commitment. It's total commitment. And I respect it. John Cleese is total commitment. It's just and I think that's the fun part. You just see how much fun they're having. And it's it's weird. I wonder if we're I think we got away from that where people have to be so careful and I think it's now I mean because of social media it's it's like oh is this going to be funny are my fans going to like it am I going to offend anyone where now granted I'm glad that we have progressed some through the comedy maturity stages but I think we also there was there was just a lot of good comedy when before social media there's still good comedy now. I don't know what I'm saying. Well, well they, they yeah. took risks. You, you don't take to like in, in, in a Holy Grail, that the same movie we're talking about, the credits are at the beginning and then the movie just ends. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> I, I'm not from Hollywood. You people tell me, but that's against the rules. And they did it just because, right? Just because they wanted to. I'm sorry. You, well, you guys don't care. I was going to say, though, in, in the singletons, though, there's elements of Monty Python with like kind of how you, rack, you know, ratchet that up. The level of comedy it's very kind of monty python-esque and i i think that's coming back like i i have a short film called the hit that's on the festival circuit now same thing kind of sort of monty python-esque like not afraid to go for like the big moment and the big the big comedy and the over-the-top comedy um so hopefully there's a return to that because i miss that yeah. i do too and it's when you're surprised and it's a twist and you actually find yourself really laughing out loud that's that's the best because i think as you get older and you've seen more things and more sketches and and like you said it's like oh that's kind of like this or that's kind of like that but for someone to really twist something and to be like all right that's funny i love that Mm -hmm. absolutely Although the classics hold up, I, I'm re-watching, it's a 2013 film called The Heat with Melissa McCarthy and Sandra Bullock. Oh my God, Melissa McCarthy. She made me laugh out loud so many times watching this goofy movie just, and like half her stuff was improvised and you just realize that she has always been so good and so on top of her game and talk about commitment. Cause I'm watching it. I'm rewatching it now with the uh, director's commentary. And it was like the second day of filming and she's a frustrated uh, Boston cop. So that. So yeah. And she's a mess and the Sandra Bullock character is like this buttoned up FBI agent. Of course they have to figure out how to work together when there's a case that's in Boston. So yeah, uh, yeah, immediately, like she parks in too tight of a parking spot in the police station. And someone's in her spot or whatever. She can't open the car doors because there's police cars that sandwiched her in on either side. So she did her own stunt of crawling through her window into the police car, like through the window <laughs> and then out the passenger door. And uh, the director was like, yeah, she did that herself. Same thing when she had it. She's chasing a. a criminal and like trying to and he jumps a chain link fence that she had so much adrenaline she actually climbed the whole thing and like wow. you know went over and they said yeah we got a stunt double to show the stunt person landing on the other side but she's so brilliant she though, like, milking every moment she milks yeah. everything and her physical oh comedy like her, her non-verbal comedy i should say is just like next level very few can can do what she does and it's just dead on commitment and all i'm thinking is how the hell is anyone keeping a straight face who's acting opposite and i was watching the editing and you can tell that you can see sandra start to go or whoever it is and they they instantly cut away and it's like i <laughs> you just know what's that is it which works for the character 
works with a carrot totally but oh, i mean awesome. these these zingers that i i want to go and read the script now because i'm curious how much was in the script i bet a him. lot is improvised with her it just she just just watching it it just even as an, an you know an outsider of the industry i'm like it just seems like it just i don't know it just seems hey, like it's, it's a lot Barrett of in the chat kaylee Thanks barrett in the chat here. hey hey Yay. Oh, it's like Kaylee Barrett. Hi, Kaylee. What's up? I just I just saw Kaylee a few days ago in Boston. Yeah, hey. one of my best friend's daughter. Ah, uh, my so child's good to see best you. friend Beth Beth Barrett. Yeah. Hi, Kaylee. It's good to see you, but not see you, but see you. Exactly. Thanks yeah. for joining us. We like it when people drop in the chat. It's kind of fun. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, I want to talk. I'm trying to think of if we should do it here or we should move on. I like it gonna, here. You like it here. I like it here too. I like your perch. I feel David. comfortable up here. <laughs> I feel like I'm still here. I'm involved, but I'm I'm kind of like letting you two old friends catch up, but I'm still piping in. This it this oh, visually yeah, represents my 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 comfort here. <laughs> David, David, can you let down your hair, please? <laughs> That's right, I can Rapunzel at you guys. <laughs> Climb up. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, did Ed McMahon ever sit on the top of a castle? I don't think so. So, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. No, eh. But he would have. Yeah. For would've. Johnny, he would have done anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm lucky to have you, David. Thanks for hanging in the castle. Yay. <laughs> Making the magic. Um, I want to talk. Okay, so you mentioned that you took your dog to Boston on the plane and that now your dog is a travel dog. And I want to know how you are doing this. This is very important information. Um, yes, she's my dog Della is my road dog now. Um, I didn't start traveling with her until the pandemic. Um, and since the beginning of the pandemic, I've crisscrossed the country now three times, which wow. is kind of wild. Um, once for a job and once for a surgery and once just to get the heck out of Los Angeles. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I decided last minute um, back in November when I was flying to Boston to shoot Kevin can fuck himself. I didn't have any time to plan anything. I, you know, I, I booked it and I went. So I just grabbed my dog and like threw her in the plane and I was like, all right, let's see how this goes, having never done it. Um, and she was brilliant. Oh um. my God. That's she cool. adapted and just like slept and she's so chill and it's to the point like the flight I just took back the other day we landed at um at, at LAX and the guy behind me got up and saw her he goes I didn't even know you had a dog oh that's like, so good I thought you were gonna ask was that dog here the whole time and be like no halfway through the flight this thing jumped <laughs> in my lap from the wing it's crazy like, <laughs> from the window um no but like yeah so most of the time like if i bring her to a restaurant or bring her on a plane people are like i didn't even know there was a dog there that's, that's how great she is she just like yeah and she's my she's my rescue i found her on the 101 freeway oh how old now how old is your dog she's about nine i found her eight or eight or nine years ago um was she running across the 101 and you pulled over onto the shoulder and no, for you people in L who are not in la or don't know los angeles it's a very, it's what, an eight lane, incredibly, each way, incredibly congested highway, freeway. Um, no, she was on the on-ramp and she was just lying there on the on-ramp. And I saw this dog, it was like a gray, medium-sized dog. And then I called my friend, Eldad, um, who runs a charity called Hope for Paws that everyone should check out because it's incredible. He's the only one of his kind, as far as I know, in the country. All he does is go into the streets and rescue animals from dangerous situations. Like he's, wow. he's gone into the desert, he's crawled under like gang members' houses, he'll go down train tracks, he'll like whatever it takes to like rescue an animal. In fact, as I was driving here to <laughs> for this interview, I, on the highway, uh, on the 101 of all highways, the one I found out on, there was a sign that said sponsored by Hope for Paws. <laughs> uh, <laughs> highway signs. Yeah. So, so L dad came out and he rescued Della off of the, the thing, um, off of the on-ramp and everyone can watch her rescue. Actually, if everybody, I mean, we can put it in a chat maybe, but if everyone Googles faith freeway rescue, the first video that comes up is the actual video of Della's rescue. Um, so you can see the magic that hope for pause does. 
Um, the magic you did saving this little dog from the freeway. I'm sure yeah. that was the happiest day of that dog's life. Yeah, but surprise, she was like a small white poodle, you know, go figure. <laughs> she looked gray on the high, on the freeway, I guess, laying but, in the dirt. Yeah, took her home and that, that was it. That was, that was a wrap. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. for those people who don't know, I guess we can confess that we cheated today a little bit. Uh, that usually the three of us are in three different locations, me and David and our guest. And uh, once in a while, we have friends uh, whose laptop doesn't support the green screen. And we really love to play and put people. So Hillary is actually in my spare room right now. <laughs> she, we are on two different devices and two different rooms, but uh, she came to Burbank and it's just, it's more fun where now we can play and do this also, rather than- I have like- you have to understand, like I did a film with this woman having not seen her. I have not seen her for like, oh, that's right. Half. Like, and I worked, we did a film together and still and haven't seen each other. So I was like, she's like, let's do a Zoom. I was like, no, I'm like, I'm coming over. Yeah. Like, like, it came. And so that's why in the next scene, but we're going to cheat. Uh, that's why there's definitely see. an energy. I feel the We've energy. We've got matching wine glasses, except the uh -huh. green screen is making yours. There you go. Yeah. Yes, our rose. So cheers. 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 Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you definitely so, have a, a more. I mean, you know, th it's great that we can meet across the country and everything, but I can tell that you guys are in the same physical space. It's just a little extra, or maybe it's the wine, but a little, a little extra bubbliness. <laughs> but wait, we question. we haven't heard about the um. What? And I'm I'm sorry I don't want to I don't want to step into the whole no, show, ahead, but David. I want I want to hear about Kevin needs to go reassess his life choices. <laughs> oh, Kevin can f himself, as David Meldo <laughs> might say. Yeah, what is is this sounds like a really cool project and did we forget the part of the show where we ask about it? Uh we did. So I'm glad. Thank you, my faithful co-host. <laughs> Hillary, tell us about Kevin can F himself coming out on my birthday, June 20th. Coming out on June 20th. Woo! Um and early June 13th on AMC Plus. So if you have AMC Plus, you win. Um <laughs> yes. What's the show about? So the show is about uh Basically, it's a mashup of the old style of sitcoms with like an indie film. So it's multicam meets single cam. And it's essentially inspired by Kevin Can Wait, that Kevin James show that yes. sits on the air. And what they had done was replaced his wife on the show, like just summarily dismissed her for a new wife. Um, for As one does, yes. Yeah, actually. Um, so that was the That's very Hollywood, yeah. So, yeah, it's the show is phenomenal. It's about like a long suffering housewife living in Boston, um, who basically decides that she's had enough of being the punching bag uh, to Kevin, who everyone can't get enough of, and she uh, decides to kill him. Oh. So, so he steps out of the multicam world and straight oh. into the, the dark underbelly of Boston, um, and oh. goes on quite an adventure to like find herself. Um, all over from Worcester to Brockton. Like these are like these some tough, some tough towns. So yeah. And I you come I, back as the dead body and then like as yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I uh I uh, I'm going to appear in episode four and I encounter her in the underbelly part of the world. So not I'm the not underbelly, like not like in someone's rib cage, but um, yeah, no, the actual, yeah, the dark, I'm, I'm, I'm in the dark half, which, you know what, that's where I want to be, so. You got a thing going. It works for yeah. you. It, it stars um, Annie Murphy from Schitt's Creek. Fresh oh, nice. Of Wynn, which is nice, and Mary Hollis Inviden, who is fantastic. I've worked with the two of them. They're both phenomenal, phenomenal, and I'm, I've been reading all the reviews, and everyone is raving about Annie, and they're raving about Mary Hollis, and I think that's so exciting, and my friend Brian Howe, my, my good friend from, from real life, <laughs> Brian Howe also is in it. He plays Kevin's dad, so oh, it was cool. actually nice to be part of something, even though I didn't get to work with him, just with, you know, a friend, so that was cool, and uh, Brian's a phenomenal actor, so excited to see his performance with everybody else. I can, I can honestly say, hey, even if I didn't know you, I, I'm going to watch this just because it sounds cool. I mean, I would watch it because I know you now, but even if, like, just from the description, it's like, I, I want to watch that. Oh, no, it's cool. It's it cool. sounds really cool. I like the description, though, the, the uh, multi-cam, the shot with a single cam. Like, yeah, so, like, it's, it's like, like, picture it like she's in, you know, this bright, sunny kitchen, 
getting shit on by everybody, you know, the brunt of every joke. And then she walks through this swinging door and boom, like dark. It goes like full Sundance film. I mean, it looks amazing. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's, it's playing with like the reality and, you know, the hopelessness and she's basically wasted 10 years of her life. She'd been giving, you know, giving her herself to this guy who doesn't give a shit and doesn't see her and doesn't want her to succeed in any way, shape or form. Right. So it's about that. And it's about, you know, the friendship between women as well. I love that. Yeah, we do. We do. And it's, it's created by Valerie Armstrong, who create, who, does she create Lodge 49? I think she was an EP on Lodge 49, but yeah. So female led, female directed, female wow. star. I'm like, yes, I'm all about it. Nice. Is there a chance for you to come back or are you dead? <laughs> no, I'm not dead. And even if you're dead, you come back anyway. Still come back. That's this is not Hillary. Yes. I always, I always say never say never. You know, you don't, you never know what these worlds will create, like who comes back randomly to have another little song and dance. But as, as it stands now, I'm, I'm just in the, the one episode and just thrilled to be. So yeah, like I said, always working. Yeah, trying. But you know what? That's interesting. That you say that trying because for. Uh, actors who may be watching or watching this later, what would you say the key to your hustle is? Like, how, like people are like, how, how are you finding these auditions? How are you showing up uh, for these opportunities? Um, well, I had kind of a break a few years ago where I was not getting any auditions. I was getting so few and most actors can relate to this because it's so hard to just get into the room. I mean, you're competing against two to 3000 people per role. Yeah. At least in Los Angeles. And it's just, I mean, those odds are just stacked against you. So I kind of had this sort of come to Jesus moment with myself where I went back to my sales roots because before I moved out here to act, I worked in Boston um, as a program director and executive producer and, and a sales rep essentially. So I was like, I, like my pipeline sucks. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, my sales funnel sucks. I'm like, I'm <laughs> gonna, like, I'm like, I'm never going to, you know, book enough parts if I'm not reading for enough things. And so I just decided one day, like, I'm going to read for everything I can. And I just like took off the governor. I just was like anything like, and then I can read for, I'm going to read for it. And that's what shifted. Now, granted, like the, I did that only in the beginning, just to kind of get that momentum moving and start to get some bookings and start to get some things out there. Um, now it's, you know, I'm a little pickier about it, which everyone should be, <laughs> but that was the moment where I was like, you know what, I'm going to do whatever I can. So I like submitted to everything. I looked up who was involved in the project. I sent emails, like personal wow. emails, which there's differing thoughts on that but um it's hustling I just was like, yeah I just was like you know what I don't give a shit anymore like I'm over caring I'm over like being precious about it and I was right. like if I if I piss someone off I piss them off like they're probably not going to remember it in a few years anyway so I, I just like what I went for it hard and I looked for things even like Facebook groups like I really just broadened the search and that was the shift for me and then yeah. And it was just about going hard after things. And then because I went so hard after things, um, I was able to sign with a manager um, during the pandemic, actually. A wonderful manager. Congratulations. MGM That's awesome. Artists. Um, yeah. And then, but, but before that, I was really doing it on my own. I mean, I've had managers over the years. I've had agents over the years, but none that really stuck. So mm -hmm. in the downtime, I was always just doing it myself. And it's about, you know, working with friends a lot, but it's also just about reaching out and I would go, and I, I always talk about this term, reverse engineering. So I would figure out what was being cast, figure out who was in charge, backtrack it, figure out if I knew anyone that was connected to the project or connected to the person, connected mm -hmm. to the project, and just reach out. And I just, I, just, I just really stopped giving a shit about what people thought. And, and then it's about bringing your goods once you do get in the room. It's about having your craft, being prepared and oh. wowing them. I mean, that's, a I mean, a lot of times actors are like, oh, if I could just get in the room. Yes, that is a challenge, but you have to 
you have to be so prepared and be the person from the moment that door opens. What is it? I think they said within seven seconds, even before you open your mouth, they pretty much know if they, if, if, if they're going to want to cast you or not. So. Yeah. Yeah. That is very key. I mean, I look back now and I realize and I've been in LA a long time now, <laughs> well over a decade. And you look back and I'm like, wow, my early stuff, like, nope, wasn't ready. And I can look back at my tapes and be like, no, that was not like professional. Cal- I thought it was, you know, <laughs> but I've realized That's about growing your craft though. That's evolving. And yeah, well, you- half the problem, half the issue is that when you're not reading a lot and you're not getting called in a lot, which is what happens to every actor at the beginning of their career, it's so hard to be in that mindset of like, oh, it's just another audition. Because everyone you do, you're like, this is so important. And like, it comes across. <laughs> like, right. that, that desperation. Yeah. So it oozes from your pores. You do it all the time. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to widen my scope and just, instead of going for just like the marquee projects, I'm going to go for indie. I'm going to go for shorts. I'm going to go for mm-hmm. everything I can get my hands on just so I can be auditioning all the time. And like, I, I just knew I needed to work on that muscle. Like on set, I was fine. Like I, I knew what to do. Like I've been doing this a long time, but auditioning, I had to like really condition that muscle. Um, it took a long time. Now, could you feel it? The roles that you did get cast when you were like, you finished your audition, did you just feel it like, oh yeah, I nailed that and I'm so going to get cast? Or was it like, you just never know? Mostly it's, you never know, but sometimes you do have that like kind of a magic sort of moment in this little thing where you're like, oh, that was, that was a little bit of magic in a bottle, you know, right there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's usually the roles that come back to you. But sometimes like, I remember because I was an actor in my twenties and early thirties that there were times where you're just like, you know, whatever. And then you get a call back. You're like, seriously, like that was, I was so <laughs> off. Like why? And then other ones where they're laughing, they're like, oh my God, I love you. And you, you know, they're asking your availability in the room and you're like, oh, I so booked this and then like nothing. And so it's like, I don't even know anymore. And I remember that was one of the most frustrating things about auditioning that you just, I just never knew. I couldn't yeah. even trust my gut anymore. I, feel, I always feel like the more you throw it away, those are always the ones that generate the most interest. The ones where you're like, whatever, like, I don't know what that was. Everyone's like so interested in them. <laughs> <laughs> that was some interesting decision. I think it's fun to sort of like out of your own head about it. You're just like, all right, I'm just going to do this, whatever. And it's the ones where you're like, I've crafted this amazing performance and I've done all my homework and I'm like loaded for bear. Those are the ones that man out. (laughs) It's true because people want real people. They want you or a version of you. So it's true, which I like. Hey, David, you know what I'm thinking? What's that? I'm thinking it's like party time. Party time. I think it's party time. I think we should hit the clubs because are, nobody are we three, is three club. party girls over here. I think that we're three party girls are going to a club. Now we've been to Scotland. I think uh, we need a little dance party. All right, so this David, is the debut of of debut of club. And David put a little together a little something special. We have to come up with a name a name for a name for our club, but I think it's David's wacky, goofy, goofy. Now, first of all, I want to say um, happy Pride Month and completely unrelated. That dancer's cute. There's something about that boy. <laughs> the one on the pole or the, like the ape, ape man trolley? You know, they both got moves. <laughs> they, both got, they both got their moves. Oh, my God. And wait, oh, wait, go cocktails. back one second. Oh. I want, we want to see Daredevil in the corner. Do, do you want to take a tour of... I should get close-ups. I'll set up next week and have close-ups of each... Of each uh, so David the put this all together this week, and as he pointed out, took me a moment of looking at all these things. That we've got three live screens of us. I should have made one of the. Of the I should have made them the Scotland scenes. No, I think this is great. I yeah. think it's great. Yeah, we're live up and in the little TVs in our main studio. 
Incredible. And you've got yourself as the devil bouncer. The VIP room. The v sorry, VIP room. And we got Daredevil kind of jamming out with some moves. I love it. Oh my God, David, you're s hilarious. Yeah, and if, then uh, you what's his name? Ryan Reynolds? Is that the actor who plays da Daredevil? What's his yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. It, if he's watching and ever wants to stop by and be on the show, he's welcome. There we go. I'll be happy to hang. You should hang with us. And here he's we really are, good. three martinis. Yay. Cheers. Yay. Cheers. I know we've got our wine and martinis because we're, <laughs> we're luscious like that. So, cha ching. My, my God. I know. I feel like I kind of left the club scene. In my, well, I was not a huge club person, anyways. Were you, Hillary? No. Did you like going to clubs? I did my I, I did a little bit when I moved to LA, but not really. I'm not that girl. Me neither. I'm me neither. No, none of those club girls. I had to experience it to see it because you know when you're a young person, that's what the other young people are doing. But I was, um, yeah, I was a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, I was not. I was like you, where it was. I, I went a handful of times because I'm like, well, I should see what this is about. But the whole waiting in line and going through the, you know, the red velvet. <laughs> bring them back like oh god i mean once in a while i'd get to hang with a fancy friend that you know got waved in and that was a very different experience i'm like oh oh now i get why the fancy people love going to clubs because uh you are treated very differently so it's true yeah so it's it's bizarre what a strange culture but now that the pandemic's over and I just don't care, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I may dance on a bar table again. I'm a little old to dance on a bar table, but who cares? Why not? Hey, Goonies never say die. There you go. <laughs> Goonies never say die. I love it. So true. But you know what, Hillary, I'm surprised about that because for those people who don't know her, Hillary throws herself the most incredible birthday party every year that I'm a little intimidated and completely in awe of. <laughs> it's my favorite. I miss it. I haven't, I have now I'm two birthdays out because I had one birthday at the beginning of the pandemic and one birthday in April 21. So I've, I've now had two birthdays that were very small, but very fun affairs. Um, Tell David about your birthday party, your your big blowout birthday parties. because yeah, I like to celebrate a birthday. I like to celebrate the passing of the year and I like to always have a good time. So uh, every year I try to do something different and I pick um, like a hot venue in town. It's either brand new or, or pretty new. And I usually do a, you know, work with the venue. <laughs> Sorry, the Amazon guy just delivered tea. So keep going. Um, so yeah, I throw, I throw a, a, a huge birthday bash. I like my friends to all meet each other. I like all my worlds to collide. So it's just like, for me, I love seeing all the different groups of people that I know, all the people that I know all in one place and like all meeting each other and being like, oh my God, this is so great. Um, one of my favorite birthdays though, um, was it, gosh, the year before um, last year was I brought a hundred people to the Laugh Factory on sunset um brought 100 100 of my friends we all got to see a show i got pulled on stage during the show which wasn't planned like that was completely not a planted thing at all i got pulled on the stage to do all this like prop comedy for like five minutes which was crazy to be on stage and have like literally 100 of your friends cheering you on that's and then awesome we went, then we went over to the sunset marquee which is my favorite um hotel in la and we went to the we took over bar 1200 like literally the bar was filled with my entire world and it was amazing. Oh my gosh. It was like my favorite birthday ever. So and you have the most incredible and beautiful friends ever. Like you walk into one of her parties and you're like, who are all these people? And Hillary, of course, always looks like just a knockout. She's got like the outfit and, the, and she's got a groovy shoe boot collection and the hair. <laughs> No, I mean it's like, are you kidding me? No, it's uh, I do, I do got it all coming up. I'm not gonna lie. I definitely have help. I definitely <laughs> have friends that like help me pick out what to wear and they help me do my hair and makeup. So it is it is a team effort. Um but yeah. You got a squad, you got a glam squad. 
had a glam squad for that night. But um, yeah, I like, you know what? I've always said I like to collect people and not in a creepy basement way. Um, <laughs> I just, I, if I meet you once and we have, like, there's something there, I just, yeah. you're my friend forever, unless like, you really have to do me wrong. <laughs> like, but if you do, I am Sicilian and, you know, don't cross me. Uh, yeah. I don't look it, but cross me and see what happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always people. see the stabby girl coming out it's yeah, like, um I just yeah I love people I love people's stories like when I was traveling just in the last you know couple of weeks to Boston and back I like picked up some new friends along the way like I love to like talk to people so those parties are like everyone I know and anyone who's invited that party is someone I absolutely love so oh. it's just, it, it feels very large and it is large but there are a lot more people I could invite but don't <laughs> so well that's a tribute to you hillary of showing truly how loved you are and that it shows that you you care about people and and it they are a festive occasion and yeah we need we need another i love that kind of positivity it, it's like like on twitter everyone's always complaining about stuff oh the repair guy did the thing and and my boss was mean about this and politics blah 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 and the other day i tweeted what's the deal with all of my friends being so ridiculously good looking how are you people doing this and everybody tweeted back and everyone was happy and it was just out, out of nowhere just i love my friends and i think you're all really good looking and it was just it was just it, it made my day their responses made my day well, David, you're a ray of sunshine, so I can totally get that. You have been so incredibly supportive and complimentary, so I, I get that. Um, we're get family that. now. This is this is us. Oh, I'm in the middle of this lovely Yay! podcast. <laughs> it's so cute. Hugs. I love you guys. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I could, oh, I could fix that so you go behind us. <laughs> can I give you rabbit ears. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah somebody's got to be in front oh my gosh oh the last thing we were going to talk about on my list um uh, and we didn't even need a list because i could just talk to you all day uh that hillary and i are both on clubhouse and uh we set up this fabulous room of hillary's the entire room was filled with all hillary's and hillary bereford was the one who came up with the idea of the name of the room and because we all spell it differently of Hillary, 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 like Tony, Tony, Tony. Right. And we got so many props for that because we've got one L, we got double L's, we got me with an I and, and I think we had an IE, I think. So we had Hillary Levi, we used to work at Crunchyroll. We um, had Hillary, we had the two of us. Um, then we had a couple of Hillary's that we didn't know, but we just grabbed them and said, hey, you're a Hillary, come join us. Oh, so we started like wandering into the room. They're like, what's going on in here? Because it's like you go on stage and all you see is like a whole panel on everyone's profile of Hillary. Yeah, it's pretty great. But most pretty of us were in entertainment. So we were able to talk, shot, you know, film and it's, we had fun. We're going to do that. We're going to have to do that again. We have to we have to do it and it's and it happened so organically because i jumped on clubhouse and had no idea what was going on and people started talking it's very disorienting when you join clubhouse because you don't expect your friends to suddenly be in your ear talking to you out of nowhere and right. i remember you and i were talking and there was a hillary that wandered into the room it's, hillary, it's levi it was double l i call her double l um yeah. and we were like whoa look at all these hillary's and then we we're like we should do a room it was so <laughs> that's right that's right it happened very organically so cool. it like, that's and she got a new job, by the way, which uh, she's posted on social media, so I'm not telling tales out of school. She is now a new uh, literary manager, repping writers in genre and animation. So, wow. Yeah. Well, if you're out there listening. Nice. So, yeah, we had a little celebratory yesterday. Uh, June 7th, 2021 was her first day of work so she was celebrating in a little it was like martinis after work room and so she had a bunch of friends in that we're all wishing her congratulations because it was one of those things that you know during the pandemic mm -hmm. like a, i mean 
a bunch of us, you know, just weren't working. And she really was like, oh my God, am I ever going to work again? Which I think this year, so many people have gone through it where it's just the world is different. There's no stability. There's no rules. Like now that things are reopening, like what's happening is, is there a job? Is there a way to make money? And so the fact that not only did she land a job, but she landed a plum job that she's going to absolutely kill it. So it's gonna yeah, be awesome. well, that, there's definitely been like some cracks and some openings to have some pretty great things happen alongside some pretty shitty things. Um, so yeah, I think I've, I've seen some openings too, first off on the producing side, cause I produce a lot and I have a couple of projects going on that side of things as well. And that, you know, to be able to act in Boston in the middle of a pandemic was pretty great as well. You know, so there were some opportunities that came out of it that were truly unexpected. So that's great. I'm glad, I'm glad Hillary landed somewhere amazing because Clubhouse is such a crazy place and it's a total, just yeah. a total vortex. Like the craziest stuff happens in there. Like it, it really kind of- oh, sp Speaking of which, do you know that they had the first Clubhouse wedding like this last week? No way. Where two people met on Clubhouse, what? fell in love, and they actually got married wow. and live streamed over Clubhouse during their nuptials. Wow. Okay. 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 Impressive, That's right? Th yeah. Also quick, but great. <laughs> Well, Clubhouse has been around a little over a year, and maybe if you know, you know, like a year, been. year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was a little, I was, I was late to the party, but still early, I guess. <laughs> I was, I was like, right. I came in February, 2021. So I thought I was late. And then now actually people are like, oh no, you're one of the first people I met. Cause I was obsessed for my first. Oh my goodness. Week. I wouldn't shut up about it. I mean, I still talk about it a lot, but I have backed way off. And so, yeah, now that I'm like, oh, I need to get my own projects going on instead of trying to network and which I love to do. I, you know, I, I think it kind of was the salve I needed for my social connection and talking to people, which for me was fantastic because I missed that uh but now that things are opening up and i'm starting to see people and doing things and i'm hyper focused on getting my own projects up and out there which yeah I'm hoping this yeah 2021 working to make that happen oh, so we'll does our guest have any projects that we forgot to talk about we talked oh, about yeah. the kevin thing is there anything else we want to promote anything upcoming that we should be tuning in and watching um, well, I, I mentioned Equal Standard is out now on demand everywhere. So definitely uh, with iced tea. Out. With iced tea, yep. And it's all it's all about um, race in the New York Police Force mm -hmm. specifically. So very topical, and I really am proud to be part of that movie. So that's incredible. Um, my film, The Hit, which is a short film, uh, screwball kind of style short film and, that I star in is out on the festival circuit right now and it's winning yes. some great awards and I've, I've managed to uh, take home a couple of acting awards as well. So that's kind of exciting. Right on. And, Congratulations. One more film um, just starting its run on the festival circuit. It's a sci-fi film. It's called Assimilated. We shot it in the woods in October um, in the middle of the pandemic. So very strange all around. And that one is called um, Assimilated. It's just about to the festival circuit next month. So wow. definitely worth checking out too, because a lot of these festivals are still online. So just because yeah. you can't go in person doesn't mean you can't tune in and watch. So check those out. Very a lot good. of content. A lot of content. <laughs> That's me. That's content. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. It's important. It's uh, hey, and you know what I want to give a shout out to? It's not my film. I had nothing to do with it, but uh, this is the opening week of In the Heights. And I want to champion that and say, this is the movie that is so important to go see, especially opening weekend. Please go see it because uh, when people talk about diversity and inclusion, it's the Lin-Manuel Miranda film from the creator of Hamilton. And the Latinx community is beside themselves with excitement to see themselves represented. And we need to see more content like this. So please, please buy a ticket. If you don't want to go to the movies, buy a ticket anyways and gift it to somebody else. But uh, getting these box office numbers opening weekend is critical. So I'm throwing that. By the way, Lin-Manuel, Lin if you're watching, if you ever need a, oh. um, 
a stunt double. That's right. <laughs> I've been told. You do. I'm not quite. I mean, he's gorgeous. I'm not quite as good looking, but I think with the right lighting, we can make it work. I can make it work. I'm not so gonna good. waste my shot. And then, <laughs> how's the rap? Can you rap? I'm working on it. I can play one of their songs on the bass. But I like that you change. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Uh, oh, now you got me. Did I, I mess up the I'm lyric? I'm not gonna throw away my shot. But I like. I'm not gonna waste my shot. Oh yeah, yeah. See, because you're kind of Lin Manuel Light. It. Yeah, you personalized <laughs> it. You made it your own, which I think is incredibly important. He's such well, a genius. Oh my god. Such a genius. So go see In the Heights. Go see Hillary's show and watch Kevin can fuck himself. That's coming out on June twentieth. So uh, let's head on back to our talk show set. Thanks for the martinis, David. I'm picking up that tab. <laughs> Where's our music? I know. Where's our music? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, We're waiting. We've got go. this. But Hillary, thank you so much for oh. being on the there show. There we go. Yay. Yay. We got our crowd back. They followed us from the bar. Millions. Woo. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys, if you like the show, if you made it this far, please subscribe and you can share the link to your friends. Next week, we're going to be back with the fabulous uh, John Savage, who's going to be here, and our interpreter, Julie Pond, will be back. So please tune in. And other than that, we will see you next Tuesday. But uh, I need to call my dragon, Dee Dee and uh, head off into the sunset. So thank you all for being here. Thanks this for hanging so with me. so much fun this week. So Thanks for fun. hanging, thank everyone. Thank you, Hillary. Thanks for hanging. Oops, I wasn't supposed to show that. No one saw that. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Love you all. Y'all thought, go ahead and subscribe to LDFIP. <laughs>